Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover, your home for ice fishing news, tips, stories, and strategies. And now, your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. Today, our guest is Mark Harmon from CORE, and we're going to talk fish houses in June, in July, and why you should buy them. Mark, thanks for joining the show. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to be here, Chris, and I look forward to sharing what sensor knowledge I might have that could be helpful. All right. We're going to talk today, we're going to come up with the top 10 reasons to buy a fish house right now. So top 10 reasons to buy a fish house in June. We haven't cheated and looked at each other's lists, so we may have the same things, but our directives were both, we're going to come up with five of them. We're going to go back and forth, and I'm going to let you take the stage first, Mark. What is your reason you want to share first? And these are in no particular order, but uh, what is your reason you want to share first? All right. I, I came up with one I don't know if you're going to get, and that's not a challenge, but we're on the first one. And this is, you know, your trading options change this time of year. If you're speaking and talking to a dealer, uh, that boat isn't near as valuable to them in December or possibly November uh, or an ATV. You know, you give a dealer a boat and trade on that fish house that maybe you aren't using as much. I think a lot of us have intentions that we're going to use our boats a lot, but I think pretty aggressive. If you're an aggressive fisherman, your boat might see the water 20 times a year and you're doing really, really good. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking to be able to take advantage of that ice time uh, and fish more and upgrade the fish house that you're in right now, why not trade in the boat to uh, a dealer that could use that right now or an ATV as hunting season rolls around? Yeah, maybe maybe that fish house, if you want to upgrade your fish house, is more valuable to, to that dealer right now, knowing that he's going to have time to sell it rather than bringing that trade in in November where maybe he's not going to have as much time to sell it. So. Maybe that right. fish house is also more valuable. I didn't think about that. That's a good one. There you go. So, all right, I'm going to go with this one. And I think uh, this one is is good, kind of plays into what you're saying. But selection is really good right now. Many mm -hmm. of last year's models that are on the lot right now are going to have sale tags on them. But this year's models haven't been picked over yet. So you're going to have the opportunity to see more models and choose the model that's going to work best for you, work best for your budget. So, you know, if you show up, you know, maybe in, in November, December, a lot of people have already picked out what they wanted and, and those might be off the lot, but uh, lots are, are going to have fish houses on them right now and plenty, plenty to choose from. Yep, you're 100% right. And on that same note, but I'll make this point three, if you're wanting to customize a house, this is a great time to make your decision or choice. When we start looking at lead times, that could be 12 or 13 weeks with the manufacturer and you walk in in November, you might be putting that decision off until the next year. If you look, start making your decisions right now, you would probably see yours by Labor Day or potentially before hunting season and really get a lot more use out of that. Of course, as you said, selection should be good right now on the lots for most of your dealers. But if you are a custom order guy, just don't wait till November to do this or December and expect to see it before Christmas. Yeah, so now's a good time to get that order in and and you'll be able to pick out what you want if you want to build something custom. Um, we're going to keep it going here with maybe the summertime theme, and it's something that I've seen a lot on your Instagram page and pretty much all over the place, but camping. Because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. right now, there's no state fair. A lot of the parks and beaches are closed in the urban areas, and you're not just getting a wheelhouse, but you're also getting something that can be used as a camper. Uh, mm -hmm. road trips to avoid hotels you can use it as a base camp during hunting season and like you guys say at core uh, expand your seasons and I think with everything going on in the world right now that's probably more important than ever and uh, you know I think just bringing that thing in right now you're going to be able to use it throughout the summer and into the fall before the ice even gets on the lake. For sure. And I'm going to piggyback on your COVID thing not as an additional point but just a continuation I've had several people that have contacted me uh, where they're not comfortable maybe staying at a hotel room right now, and they want more of those features and functions that they can have within their own unit uh, where they kind of know or they trust what's happening a little bit better. And so those are big considerations for people and having a unit that can do that for sure. 
um, going into uh, travel, um, I will just expand that just a little bit. But, you know, from a budget standpoint, as another point, you know, you can kind of smooth out your budget a little bit and justify it. You know, you'll, you'll hear people when you're selling these say, I just can't afford to do something like this. If I'm going to use it, you know, two months or three months out of the year, well, make your decisions based on the entire year. Uh, maybe consider something with an air conditioning or something like ours that is adaptable to put an air conditioner on or uh, that already has one on it. Uh, maybe an awning choice. You know, you see a lot of these features out here. So why not make it justifiable for that family budget and utilize it all year long? You don't have to use these trailers for uh, um, ice fishing only. And certainly at an RV park, they're a conversation piece. Yeah, for sure. You're not going to look like everybody else out there. <laughs> no, not really. No. So my third one's going to be extra space. And we're going to continue, I guess, in the COVID-19 thing. But mm -hmm. people are working from home. Both of my kids had their summer camps canceled. They're going to be home all summer. So will mm -hmm. I. Having the wheelhouse in the backyard, it's just, it provides extra space. Use it as a home office. Or if you just want to get them out of the house, send them out there. Use it as a kid's clubhouse. Get them out of the house and you can punch the keyboard in the comfort of your own home without having to listen to them yell at their video games or whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that my kids uh, for years uh, have used that as, you know, ex extra bunk room or a place where they might want to go watch a movie and just kind of be independent and, you know, and who knows what they're talking about, but they want to have that separation from parents. And quite frankly, it's kind of nice to have that break and see that independence and you know, you might be picking up a few more Nerf darts and stuff from the yard, <laughs> but the noise is buffered and they have their space. And yeah, it's kind of like a mobile uh, rec room. And I know guys, uh, you know, adults and stuff like that, that will use them for poker nights. Uh, and I've spoken to women that will use it for a book club uh, or potentially, you know, their wine night, whatever, however they want to justify that evening of getting together. Uh, but yeah, I mean, using a recreational space, absolutely. That's a huge point. I didn't have that down, but that's big. Yeah, that actually, you brought me on another thing too. You know, I just had, my, my parents came up to visit a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. and I did not want them to stay in a hotel. So we sure. kind of moved some beds around and made it work and they could stay in our house. And But it would would, would be nice, you know, to have that in the backyard and be able to, uh, you know, maybe camp out there with one of the kids and empty out a bedroom if somebody comes to visit. That's right. And so I'm going to take that right as my fourth point, you know, for somebody who might have a desire, you know, I live up north, I live up in the lakes country area. And, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of lake lots left. But as a lot of us on a family budget, it's hard to go out and justify that spend to go get that house because they all come as a premium. But if you have the intentions to build at some point, or potentially you buy something smaller, um, you know, perhaps you get a two bedroom, one bath and you bring this up and you have another bedroom, which allows you to expand that time that you use it there. That does help justify a budget in a different way. I know that uh, my wife and I were kicking around ideas. We weren't very committed to this, but it was just kind of a thought. I found a lot on a really, really nice lake up here with pristine waters and it had great beachfront. And there's only so many of those lots left. Uh, the money wasn't horrible, but with COVID, this isn't quite the year to do stuff like this. But anyway, I was looking at it and uh, just kind of kicking the let's pretend thing a little bit. And my wife says to me, she goes, you know, really, if we just had a place to change uh, in a bathroom, we could make that work. And it was nice to kind of hear her turn that corner. <laughs> you know, I mean, we would probably stay at our house, but, you know, to spend a day there or a weekend there, it expands that option as well. So that that's a big deal. Right? And, and people obviously um, will be using these for hunting. So whether it's at hunting land or maybe a lake property or something like that, uh, lake lot, uh, there's a lot of options for that use as well. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about kind of what you're going to do with it this summer, but I think the other thing, and maybe the most important thing, at least in my eyes, and you'll see it and I see it every November, December, uh, it's on, on the forums, on Facebook. Hey, we just showed up and I don't know how to light the furnace. Right. A lot of people's first wheelhouse trip is Red Lake or Lake of the Woods. They're learning yeah. how to hook up the generator or they're learning how to lower their house down for the first time when it's 10 degrees outside. 
Absolutely. So buying a wheelhouse early is going to allow you to go out there, work out the kinks, learn more about your house while you're doing stuff while the weather is nice. So I, I think that's a big one, just learning everything about that house when you don't have ice on the road, when you don't, when it's not 10 degrees out. I mean, I think that's a big one. For sure. You know, and that was one of my points I was going to make, so I'm glad you said it. So a couple of things I'll add to that is, as you're setting up that house, you know, whether it's hanging your rattle wheels or figuring out where you might want to put that rod holder or the little tweaks like hanging curtains or putting in those creature comforts, it's a little bit more comfortable to do that, uh, especially if you don't have the urgency of it's Thursday night, we're leaving tomorrow after work, uh, let's, let's get this going. And then that's when we get sloppy and make mistakes. You can take your time and you can get that set up right. Absolutely, I agree. Um, there's another point here, and this is my fifth point. Um, there's a lot of people who are nose sensitive for it. The, they have allergies. Uh, and when you open up a door on a day like today where it's 90 plus degrees, and you might, there is a possibility that you might be overwhelmed, whether it might be an adhesive smell or cedar or pine, those resonating type smells, uh, if you're sensitive to that, you're going to know it when it's warm outside. When people are buying fish houses uh, with different finishes, you know, October, November, things don't have aromas until you actually get that furnace up and going. And if you're sensitive to that now, you're going to be very sensitive to that when you're out there ice fishing. That can be a very unpleasant experience. It wasn't until I sold a different brand of uh, fish houses for a long time that I realized how sensitive people are to cedar, where they get really bad headaches and other things like that. So, you know, it allows you to kind of know. Uh, just it, it expand, you know, buying stuff at say 40 degrees, you may not get the full flavor. So you can get some full flavor now. And so that way, when you make your decisions, you know, you're making the right decisions and you don't have to have maybe some of those unseen regrets. Sure. All right. My last one, and it's probably something you hear, and, and I've talked to a couple different dealers and right now dealers are willing to deal. The prime selling season still a few months away. Early bird gets the worm, and uh, right now, if you're looking for a deal on a fish house, it's a great time to go check it out. So price is my last one, and uh, I think it's probably one that will motivate some people because everybody likes a deal. Yeah, yep. You'd be best on making some decisions here before August 1st. I mean, between 4th of July and August 1st, I think you find some of the happiest buyers out there. Uh, and you know, like for most of these reasons here, that selection, that choice, that being able to look at inventory and not be pigeonholed to one or two, but certainly, you know, you got a dealer that is motivated to be able to move something out there and get something down the road and a season that maybe they're not expected or prepared for. Uh, now you can go in there and you can kind of put a little icing on their cake that day as well. So it's a mutual win-win and those relationships usually last a very long time if things go well. Cool. Mark, that was my whole list. Do you have any that uh, we didn't talk about yet? You know, I mean, I could probably go on for hours, but I think we nailed all the high points. I, 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 I think the only thing that I would add, you know, it's just there's so many opportunities that have opened up in my life with the relationship with my wife and my kids through the time that we spend in our fish halls whether it was a trip out to Yellowstone last year or father-son trip that we took out to Spearfish Canyon or the multiple different lakes that we go ice fishing in. And if you're thinking that maybe it's not the right time to go out and buy a fish house, maybe you should look at these moments of being a father or these moments of being with your kids or your loved ones. They are limited. We see it every day. We hear the stories every day. So get out there and spend that time with the ones that you love. Make those memories and make those experiences and get out there and expand your seasons. Mark, thanks so much for coming on the show. I love having you on because you've been in this business for a long time. You know what it's all about and you're, you're just really good at kind of getting your point across and, and uh, helping people understand things well. If people want to find out more about CORE and, and what you guys do and what you're all about, where can they find you? Yeah, you, bet. you can see us on Facebook at uh, just Core Ice or YouTube, our channel's Core Ice, or come on to our website at www sorry, www.core-ice.com. All right, thanks, Mark. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Talk to you next time. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for listening to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover. For more ice fishing content, visit our blog at catchcover.com.